and the responses that was coming from, you know, the whole commander there, again, not identified. We don't, we don't know exactly who that was, who was a commander at that time. But they began to spell out some of the activities of the African Blood Brother, what they were doing at that time, the organizational aspects. And I think that's a very critical element there in getting a bead on the impact that it had in the community. To what extent were they involved with some of the individuals who defended the black community? You know, were they a part of, along with Peg Leg Taylor, were they out there with A.J. AJ Smitherman? Were they out there with Mr. Stratford? Were they a part of those individuals who, the 25 black men who decided to defend the Greenwood District? You know, that's some of the stuff that we have to still uncover as we dig into the connection between the Blood Brotherhood and the Tulsa riot. <clears throat> This is a sermon, and uh, some more information. It's about, well, in June, there's been about four months of discussion about the Tulsa riot. July, June and July are probably the most critical months, but it goes on. You can see that people are responding to this months and months later. And, and so there's a, little, a lot of information out there that I didn't have a time to uncover at this point to, to really amass. But that's a part of the ongoing research and discussion about the importance of this organization that, for the most part, have been ignored. And you can see all of the pages that we have here. And this, again, taking us back. And obviously, that's uh, at the end of uh, World War I, the parade down Main Street there, uh, the soldiers coming home. And that, that scene is replicated. We have them in Harlem in the same way of these returning soldiers they're demonstrating. And then down to the various sculptures coming from the Greenwood experience. Over the last uh, couple of days that uh, my wife and I, we've been together uh, here in uh, Tulsa to visit the, um, the Greenwood um, Education and Cultural Center to be there with Ms. Fleming and, um, and Mr. Fields and um, have them just warmly uh, greet and embrace us and introduce us to so much of the history. I mean, some of the individuals I love to, to meet, Hannibal Johnson, the kind of research that he's done on Wall, Black Wall Street, uh, to talk to some of the people that they say, I should be talking to if you're going to talk in a very definitive and an authoritative way about the, uh, the riot of 1921. They give me a list of names. Uh, I hope I can get to them a little later on as I pursue this research. But one of the things I was left with was like roaming around the district there and looking at some of the monuments and, and visiting the uh, library this afternoon. I mean, what a fantastic library you have here. Uh, I mean, it compares with some of the major libraries I've gone to in Chicago, in New York, in Atlanta, Philadelphia. Uh, you got the Oklahoma room up there in particular. I think that's just a, an inexhaustible reservoir of information, and you should protect it and use it. You know, go in there and check it out because a lot of history embedded there. And this is a sculpture.